This channel is not intended for children. Please kickstart responsibly. Hey everybody, welcome back. It is another fine day in September. Um, weather's not too bad. And the forecast for games isn't too bad either. Uh, kind of light, 22. That's going to make it easy on me, so you won't have to listen to me jabber on for over an hour like I have been. The one hard thing about um, this new format is there's no like hard limits, and it's harder to go back and uh, change things. So I just kind of ramble on. And some people like that, some people don't. But that's why I always make it so you can skip. Speaking of other fun things you can do, you can like and subscribe if you find usefulness out of the channel and uh, all that kind of cool stuff in the description and in the comments in the bottom you'll find all the links to everything if you're new here and most of you are not but a few of you are so that's it let's keep going through september because i gotta work in the morning and it's gonna be one of those early ones so let's get a, a good episode together so you can enjoy it all weekend long while i'm working then we have an interesting one, Mayflower Pilgrims Cooperative Card Game. I think that there is not enough content in this uh, world about this particular theme. However, if you were to look at the site, if you were to click on the movie, it doesn't tell you at all how to play the game. So you don't know what you're buying. Uh, good for them, they got 13 people to say that they would put more money in, but I bet they would hit their goal in a day just because there's so many people that might find the concept interesting of where the game would be played, the theme of it. Um, it's just, they don't show you how to play the game and, and why wouldn't that be important when you're trying to buy something to know what it is and how it works. For example, under construction, Roll and Write Revolution game has a section it summarizes the game and it goes right to how to play it at least it gives a description you can get rules for it uh, you can play in a solitaire mode and uh, a little bit of expectation of other things that they've made that's a lot of good stuff that someone should include with any game right you would expect it to be there so what is it it's rolling right um, about building stuff so you could probably play this with the young kids because they, especially the boys in America, we always buy them those Tonkin trucks and that kind of thing. So it's a game that maybe you can incorporate the Tonkin trucks into, as you can see with the child playing there. Um, learn a little bit how to count and all that kind of stuff. So I think it might not be too bad with younger folks to, to play along with that. Older folks, um, theme-wise, it might skew a little too young. So that part's hard. Uh, Derek uh, Dooley, I've seen pop up with a lot of these smaller types of games. As you can see, this is his eighth Kickstarter. Uh, seems to have it down pretty well. Had a reasonable amount of money at being asked for. And, and all the information was there. For three bucks at a clip, you know, it's 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 hard to, to get so many people. We've got 100 backers convinced to pay the money. So, uh, obviously, these are things that might work for somebody, even though it's a low-priced game, because they're just, you know, print, you're printing it off. One of the types of games that doesn't do so well is the types of games that are not necessarily games. This is Chatterbox, Bonding Through Conversation. So, these are mainly prompts for a conversation. There are a lot of card systems that will do this. There are, like, the uh, interview for podcast cards. There's all kinds of different things and they've been around for a really long time. So it is a complicated space, even though they've provided some uh, questions here, they're not uh, edgy, they're not over the top. It's not like um, the Cards Against Humanity style, uh, which makes bonkers amounts of money, um, or at least it used to in the very beginning. So it's a hard push. Uh, it's one of those things that it's uh, maybe in the self-publishing space, maybe in having the print-on-demand space it would be better off, or finding a way to gamify it with some type of points, some type of goal, then it would be a game, and it would belong in tabletop games. Games have to have a winner. Even if it's multiple winners, it has to have someone who can win something. 
Otherwise, you're not playing a game. For example, Code Crackers is a game. Dry erase uh, deduction game. Not social deduction, regular deduction. And you can play with two players, 20 minutes. You are going to be trying to figure out codes. So you have uh, some secret code that's in front of you. And then you're going to be given questions. And as you fill them out on your card, uh, you will try to figure out what the people's codes are and try to crack it. I think that uh, if the questions are randomized and if the codes are randomized, which they definitely appear to be, that's almost infinite replayability. So you'd probably run out of combinations before, or you probably won't run out of combinations before the universe eventually runs into its heat death. So, you know, put that on the box. And here's one that is just suffering from a bad name. Oh no, customers is about hospitality. So they could have come up with like a quirky name, um, something with a pun in it, maybe some some kind of interesting tidbit. Uh, but oh no, customers, it doesn't really tell you much um, other than maybe these people don't like their customers. Hard to tell because they don't tell you much of anything. This is not a video. I cannot click on it. Uh, this is not any information about the game. I can't click on that either. But they want $30,000 for it. So, change the name. I don't know what the, who the four backers are that wanted to jump in on this. It's like, what did you think you were going to get? Then we have Covert Cues, the card game, which... I think if this were somehow licensed for the Mr. Robot franchise, this would work a lot better because it's about hacking. Unfortunately, if you look at the content, there's really very, very little that describes the game. It is a social deduction game, but based on um, trying to uncover a hacker and then trying to uncover an admin uh, and then just a bunch of users that are kind of thrown around. You have all these words that you try to associate and um, that part all looks like it might be fun, but thematically, it's kind of hard for people to understand. There's not a lot of people that understand network security. They understand werewolves a little bit better, uh, vampires, that kind of thing for the social deduction. Um, but I don't think it operates too much differently than with Secret Hitler or any of the other social deduction voting uh, games. So uh, I think maybe if they tried to go harder into the computer side of things then maybe people would find something that they're more interested in right now it looks like it's more of a detective game and you'd be disappointed when you find out that it has more to do with like black hat white hat computing and uh penetration testing and that type of stuff then a game that knows exactly what it is we have imperial campaigns series one the boar war uh, i've seen a few things on the boar war pop up before i'm not sure if um, it's under the same Canvas Temple Publishing, I doubt it. But it is the typical war-type game. You got the little square pieces. I think these are cardboard. They could be wood. And, um, you know, you got the, the tables and other things to figure it out. The wargaming world is a little more complex than uh, a lot of the stuff you'd find for, you know, just sitting on, you know, the coffee table and playing for a night type of thing. Um, but here you have all the different hexes and counters and military folks and all that kind of good stuff. So if you're into it and uh, you like this type of uh, the British versus the Boer, then uh, maybe you'll be interested here. That is my neighbors whistling and yelling at their dog. They do that every night. Just going to plow through to the Pixel Clash, one to six player card game. Another one of those 8-bit uh emulated type of uh, art styles. One to six players, 20 minutes, uh, something that is supposed to be like probably something I would have played when I was a kid, uh, an 8-bit gauntlet style um, fantasy attack dungeon crawl deal. And you get to be one of the basic uh, archetypes. So you have, uh, you know, like the elf, the wizard, the fighter, I guess there's even a blacksmith and some other things, so that's kind of cool. You can add a few other things into it. Uh, Gauntlet, I remember the graphics were terrible, but I still kept trying to fight it. 
uh, to play through and do stuff. And, you know, you just keep throwing a million swords and arrows and other things. But the game, I never beat it. So maybe this would be a little bit easier to do. I've made it clear that my uh, my my thoughts on the art style is um, meh. I mean, I think it's a waste of, of uh, effort. Uh, just make the video game if you're going to play a video game. Video games these days are not limited by what uh, um, the the technology of the time uh, allowed for when this originally existed. And art that was made with your hands has never been limited by that. I think you can make a lot better stuff. Um, uh, that's just how I feel about all pixel stuff, not necessarily this game. This game could be a lot of fun if you cannot play Munchkin. Uh, or Munchkin Dungeon because you don't have enough friends over then this at least has a solo mode and you can try that You don't have to pay for something that is super expensive and complicated like some of the minis based dungeon crawls So that kind of thing is nice and I think the cost here is You can make a print and play for about six bucks and you can get the game itself for about 28 bucks uh, out of the UK and um yeah, so, I mean, not going to break the bank. There are things like 5-Minute Dungeon and others that are in this competitive in this space. But uh, maybe, maybe you like this style. Maybe you want this type of game. And uh, maybe you want to blow up this dragon. And puzzles are part of the hobby. Um, I'm not really sure uh, which picture you would like or not like, but... If you like any of these, then uh, maybe it's for you. Although, again, a complicated space because you can get puzzles hopefully complete from like Goodwill and things like that and definitely from Target. So it's hard to say unless you are really a lover of these bags and of these puzzles, uh, the pictures that are on them, then it's hard to suggest one way or another if you should get it. Maybe there is a better delivery system. Uh, obviously, people have been not jumping on this <laughs> uh, too heavily. Uh, there is a puzzle section of um, Kickstarter, and maybe this belongs there. But, you know... Oh, wait, it is there. Uh, maybe the puzzle section needs to be integrated into tabletop games then. Because there's not a lot going on there. So... I forget sometimes I look at these things uh, way ahead of time and then I put them on a list and I forget where I got them from and I forgot I already went through the puzzle stuff. So good for me actually going through and checking all the different things I normally check. But sorry to this one for forgetting that it's not in tabletop games. I forget stuff all the time and, uh, you know, that's just the way it works. I did not forget Mystery Loot, the Trick or Treat Edition, which is about dice. So if you want a Halloween themed type of dice, then you can pick this up. Uh, lots of people look like they already have. And you can get, I think, some metal ones and different enamel pins and all kinds of things uh, to go along with it. Uh, when will you get them? Uh, it looks like maybe by Halloween. So you can uh, pick these up and it says October 2021. Um, doesn't say October 1st, though, so it's hard to say. Uh, when's this thing actually run out? Uh, five days. So if you pick it up now, maybe they can get it shipped in time. And uh, you get your fingers crossed on what you want. And uh, hopefully you'll have it to, to play whatever missions you want to play with. Are this, You think there's going to be trick-or-treating this year? Throw it in the comments. We'll see. Last year there was no trick-or-treating. It was all canceled. Digital tabletop maps from uh, Meanders. They have, I don't know if it was five the last time it came around. But they're always up here putting stuff. Uh, Chris McDermott has lots of different um, Kickstarter pieces and things from uh, various stuff that they've created. You can see these look pretty awesome. Uh, I think that looks uh, pretty much like what you would have found on the Hate uh, Kickstarter maps. Uh, it was pretty good. All kinds of orcish resources such as uh, tokens and things that you can put all over. Um, depending on if you're going to use it in a VTT, if you're going to print them off, whatever it is you want to do. So, yeah, why not make an orc encampment incredibly memorable and an adventure that takes place there? There's so many games that have orcs. This will fit in pretty well. And then we have the pulp stuff. Pulp 35 miniatures, pulp war 35 miniatures. 
I like the idea. Um, uh, all of these things that like Sky Captain of the World of Tomorrow and uh, Pulp Cthulhu and all these different types of guys that show up. I, I like killing Nazis in my games. Um, I like the Rocketeer and all that kind of stuff. It looks like they've got some cool pieces uh, eventually when they get it all unlocked, if it gets unlocked. So you can check from the silhouette. I think they're going to ma make it to the unlocks soon. Maybe by the time Tuesday rolls around, we'll see uh, uh, if more people picked it up over the weekend. But um, yeah, if you need a pilot for any of your Victoriana or uh, any other games, that kind of stuff, then uh, maybe any of these guys would be uh, pretty useful for you. And then we have Caves and Creeps. These are resin cast miniatures for uh, whatever you think they would fit in. There's a wizard in a top hat instead of the cone hat. Uh, I'm not really sure. We'll scroll down and see what the second one is, some type of witch maybe. The slug, maybe that's a racing snail from uh, Never Ending Story. Who knows? You make it as you go. Um, this guy, I guess he's a man in the iron mask type. He's got a helmet on, but nothing else. He's all wounded up. Uh, I guess it is a witch. There you go. But she's got a very fancy hat. Maybe this is what happens when the Chiquita banana lady uh, decides to go into witchcraft. Um, this guy, you know, uh, he almost made it. To st he's early steampunk. He's like simmering punk because he doesn't have the full top hat. He's on his way to the full top hat. Maybe that's what it is. And I always highlight the dice because lots of people like dice. Um, this may help you out if you have them all and you wanted to show them off. This is a frame that you can put all your dice together in. See a nice little motion graphic gives you good ideas of how to do it. When they're all color coded and put into interesting frames with interesting you know, stuff, then uh, that could be a nice little art statement uh, depending on what you got. I wouldn't spend a hundred bucks on dice and then never use them, but if you had a bunch that are just particular colors or let's say you retired a character and you wanted to put them in there, then uh, that might be a fun way to do that and remember it. They don't have just those frames. They have these acrylic pieces down here. However, I have noticed that a lot of these acrylic boxes are available at like the Japanese uh, supermarkets and other little uh, Asian uh, inspired stores. They're able to get them fairly inexpensively um in bulk so if you didn't want to get these ones in particular then maybe you would look into what the uh the little um japanese markets have because they seem to have some pretty good prices on very very similar pieces so just throw that out there then we have these pre-supported demi demons so um there were some rather more naughty characters that but their uh, campaigns got canceled um so at least these are kind of out there. They don't quite have as risque um, of sculpts and costuming. They might work for your, uh, I don't know, uh, a ballerina of uh, demons. <laughs> so that could work too. Um, tieflings, I think, is what they're trying to go for. But lots of different uh, types of characters I don't see too much in the way of wings. I know that wings kind of got added. Um, you can have various stories, various types. Uh, oh, here's a wing, but she got her other one cut off. So like a, a no more angel kind of thing, or just waiting for the next round. Does she fly in a circle? It's hard to say. Do not know. So uh, there's a cat with bat situations happening and a couple of different uh, other things going on. So early bird wise, I don't know if you'd still qualify. It's been a couple days, um, but they're also doing some Patreon rewards and that kind of business. So give it a shot. There's the code. You can go to Gumroad or My Mini Factory and try it out. And I don't think I saw anything from My Mini Factory crowdsourcing right now, but maybe in the future there'll be more stuff. And uh, you should check them out just in case there's something from a previous campaign that you liked in the 3D printable space because chances are pretty high it might have found its way there by now. More cool 3D printable things are included in this FX Master collection. What is the FX Master? 
spell effects. So this is a bunch of different sculpts that may be evocative of spells that you are casting or effects that are lingering. So um, you can print off as many as you think you need. And maybe this will help you remember which characters are affected by which spells. Maybe. Um, looks like they've got some Harry Potter speak uh, on the uh, descriptions and kind of tell you what's going on. Probably so that they don't uh, run into any uh, issues with copyright between the different games that may or may not affect it. You can use these sculpts in wherever you want. And you can, if you're buying the STLs, you can print off a couple of them or several of them, uh, whatever you think you need. And give yourself a, uh, it's not quite an animation like you would get in a video game, but it's kind of neat to have this kind of thing going on. So like right here, if you needed a bardic inspiration, why not have a trumpet that pops out of the ground? And then the whoever's affected by it, you set it next to them. That kind of stuff is pretty neat. Um, create water so you have a create water um, if you needed to summon a bear or something like that then you know find familiar whatever your case is there's lots of different options knock you know you could tell, say that you opened the door or unlocked what particular uh, door or crate or chest or something but the other ones are not you can set that there so whatever type of persistent condition or something that will last within a round uh, this can be useful for you to uh, to have something that just demonstrates what it is that is available so you see a lot of them that show like the cones um, and that kind of thing for instant use stuff for targeting but not so much for persistent use uh, sometimes it just says the name of the condition and this can just be a little bit help more helpful uh, they, they don't need to perfectly line up one-to-one -one with the spells that are in your book or casting or whatever because they are just tokens, and you can just pick one that looks cool for whatever it is that you want to do. Hunter's Mark, right there. That would be a good one. So, you know, something to think about if you like the sculpts. Tiny D6 has been popping up with some more stuff lately. This is the Tomb of Immolation. So you have a prison tomb that you're going to be checking out full of lava. I think that this has popped up before in some context. Maybe it didn't fund uh, before, but I remember seeing this. So maybe it's just another time around and made some changes on it. Um, oh, it's the difference between soft cover and hard cover. So maybe they're moving into hard cover now, which would be cool if it was successful enough. Tiny D6 is one of those systems where it's like you just roll a D6 and you have a two and three chance of success, one and three chance of failure, but the higher the numbers that you get, the better the success would be, and the worse the failure. Like if you roll a one, you're screwed, but if you roll a six, it can, could turn out way better than you thought it would. So that's the simple decision making, if I'm, my memory serves, uh, that makes this game function. You just, you get through it quickly, and uh, you don't have to worry about a whole lot of extra rules. And Mothership has also had some content uh, pop up lately. Mothership is the one where it's like alien, where you're stuck on a spacecraft with some form of uh, invader or some type of infection. And this time you're going to get uh, Andromeda as the thing. It is a zine for the Andromeda hub. So the space station itself uh, is what you're buying and access to. Um, I guess it's going to have a 3D map, or a, not 3D, a glow-in-the-dark map that maybe you can turn the lights out and do your storytelling with that. That might be interesting. It might be a, a fun way to tell, um, you know, your, your players what's going on. Uh, you'll always know who's looking at their phone, wouldn't you? Uh, that kind of thing might be, be neat. But aliens, ship, horror, that's what's going on. Don't get eaten by the alien. If you like that kind of idea, check this out. Check out Mothership, and maybe you'll have a fun time with your, your friends. And if you want to get serious about your DMing, GMing, etc., and you want to get a steel GM screen, that's what Legendcraft has produced. So uh, I think it's magnetic. It snaps together, and you can fold it out. Um, 
to buy the basic system, you're looking at 80 bucks for a three panel screen. So, I mean, yeah, they might be engraved and look nice. That's pretty cool. But it's 80 bucks, which means you could buy four. You could buy one GM screen and a book. Um, they have some magnetic things that might fit and work out pretty well for you, such as the trackers. Uh, there's D20s. There's other things that are laser cut. You can make it look like wood, but it'll resist like metal. So that part's pretty cool. Um, and you can get this patina uh, version with the green. It's all right. It's a it's an interesting concept. Magnets are not going to wear out. As you can see here, you can have various orientations depending on your needs. Um, and it will be like your refrigerator. You can stick magnets to it. Uh, is that as useful as the stuff that's out there? Well, you could probably combine it with the, the ledges that were... Uh, I don't know, five months ago uh, that were coming out um, that fit on the screens and that will hold up a little better than cardboard. But it's four or five times as expensive. So trade-offs exist, uh, whatever works for you. I also think that the weight of this might be an issue. If it came crashing down on a resin mini, it might break the mini. So something else to think about that cardboard would not do. And then we have the lamp lighters, fantasy football, and or steampunk uh, folks if you need them. So uh, there's some concept art of what they wanted to create. Um, yeah. Let's see if we get some renders. Get a couple different ideas. Some lady, let's make it wine. And a lady with her dog. So neat. I don't really see a lot of football going on here but maybe that's kind of the point. So um, maybe you make it work as you go. I would have thought that there would be some football action, some pads, <laughs> a ball somewhere, but maybe not. Maybe this is just for you to enjoy the idea of thinking you got a bunch of chimney sweeps and stuff as your team. And if you are gonna fight those aliens described earlier, maybe you need some weapons. So for Mothership again, sci-fi horror rpg you can get yourself weapons it's a nice book the black and white art is not bad it's all very organic looking crazy stuff that you might be able to pick up you can get uh, a pdf you can get the real book you can get whatever you need and hopefully they'll be able to hit some stretch goals and add some stuff and go along with it you might be able to include this in uh, other games, and you might have to just make some small modifications. Starfinder, even D&D, &D or uh, any Star Jam or Spell Jam or whatever you want to do. It may uh, be useful there as well. Take a look at it if you're interested. And uh, yeah, take a look at Mothership too. I mean, it sounds like it'd be fun. You won't have to have so many full cam campaigns uh, to have a good time. So that always helps bring in more people or if you have an unreliable schedule, you can still play some good games and have a good time if you build around it. So just stuff to think about. And finally, the complete illustrated book of abjuration. Um, it is complete for what they're allowed to put in. So while it says compatible 5e and all the other stuff, uh, it's a book, it's printed probably just from the SRD. Uh, I don't know if it can put in spells and all that from the player's handbook and all that because that would be copywritten but maybe they can uh through whatever agreements and if there's any changes on D, D beyond or any errata then you're gonna have to just deal with it uh the same as if you bought any other products that had them printed on it uh this is a series that has been going on for over a year maybe two years at this point and they've been going through all the different schools of magic. As you can see, the necromancy one is there, the divination one, the conjuration one, evocation, illusion, transmutation, and enchantment. They've been around for a while. And they are pretty looking books. They've, um, you know, got their own little theme with the black borders and all that kind of cool stuff. It feels very much like a, a grimoire. And... Uh, Maybe that's exactly what you need. They had some books of monsters and other things to go along with it with the same consistent 
uh, art style, which is always helpful when you're creating the, the ambiance of your table and the feel of your table. So if you've been waiting for Abjuration, if that's your school, then uh, maybe this is the book for you and you can jump in on it. I thought about maybe getting some of the Zombicide stuff I've been painting out because uh, I've been talking about it at the end of the episodes for a couple weeks. But I'm really hungry and it's the end of the episode. So if you want to like, share, subscribe, that's cool. Otherwise, I'm going to get this rendering. I'm going to go do some extra hours at the office. And hopefully you'll get to enjoy both this content, all the content I'm working on, and uh, be back next week. If you like, share, and subscribe, then maybe more people will join us on that and we can do some more fun stuff. Otherwise, have a nice weekend.